And you're ignoring what God's saying to you. Lamentations, the third chapter, and the 22nd verse. Read that for me. Lamentations 3, verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Not because you deserve mercy. He said, but it is of the Lord's mercies that you are not dead. That's what he's saying. It is of the Lord. Because this man is our enemy. Let's make no mistake about it. We would be wiped out. If the Lord did not have mercy on us, he would allow this man to straight up kill us. That's what the Bible is telling you. Read it again. Verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies. It is of God's mercies that we are not consumed. So it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. That's the reason why you're still a, you're still out here with a little bit of freedom, as you call it. Is it Martin Luther King? No, it's not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was, was set up by the Most High to do what he did. So you can get some understanding. The Most High used Dr. King, Malcolm X, all the rest of these guys to break this man down to give us a little bit of freedom, to give us a little bit of, of liberty. Just a little bit. Okay? Why? Because we are not to be consumed. Read it again. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. Because God's compassions failed not. So He didn't totally wipe us out. That's what He's saying there. Now go back to Deuteronomy. So you need to file it in your brain that it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not dead. Okay, so this man being over us, any time that he would want to, he would want to just come in and just wipe us out. But the Most High ain't allowing it to happen, not yet anyway. Right. Not yet. Let me let me put that in there, not yet. Because there's a scripture in here where he's going to allow this man to stone cold, get loose on the rest of you. The ones of you that do not repent, the Lord is going to have them to destroy you with their nuclear weapons. So you can understand what I'm talking about. The weapons are already recorded in the Bible that it's going to use to liquidate you. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst. So when you want food, you have to go to your inner supermarkets to get it. Even though some of your brothers and sisters might own the bodega, might own a couple of the supermarkets, they still have to get their food from the man. Because if the man says, you know what, the prices of all of the crops is going to go up, all of a sudden you can't buy them. You don't determine the prices of these things. So you're not ruling anything. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst. And I was talking about the thirst. If the man turned off the water to these burrows, you would dry, you would dry up with thirst. You would die. You'd die. So why hasn't this been done yet? Because it's by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. But his mercy is going to run out. He's getting tired of pleading to you and you're still disobeying him. The mercy doors are going to close on you, just like they closed during the time of Noah. When Noah preached for 120 years, they laughed at him. When the, when the mercy ran out, he closed the doors on them and they all got put to death. And that's exactly what Peter's is talking When you read the book of Peter's, it's talking about the same thing. The brother said earlier, he said, this man hasn't risen up against us yet. Real quick, stay right there. Get Revelation 12. I just want the key point out of there. Because when insurrections rise up, this man can shut it down quick. But the prophecies say that this man, America, is going to come up, come against the servants of God. He's not going to come against you because you stand on the corner calling the white man the devil. That is not what the prophecy is talking about. Right. Revelation 12, real quick, let me look. Revelation 12 and 17, I just want that. Revelation 12, verse 17. And the dragon was brought with the woman. When the Bible 
says in Revelation 12, the dragon is talking about America. All right, come on, read it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. The woman is speaking of is the nation of Israel. Because Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2 says, I liken Israel unto a beautiful and comely woman. Come on. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which is the Israelites, which keep the commandments of God. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why this dragon, America, is going to come against the service. Why? Because they're going to be teaching God's commandments. Can you imagine millions of Israelites keeping God's laws, women not buying pants, not eating pork, not celebrating Christmas? The economy will crumble! And that's when this man will come against us. It's not you standing on the corner calling names. It's by repenting and keeping God's laws. Come on. Right, and like the brothers bringing out, there was a census that was done some years back measuring the gross national product of all nations. And they did a study and they found out that out of all the nations on this planet Earth, it's like 120 some odd nations, something like that in the UN. They said out of all the nations, they went from the top to the bottom, from the richest to the poorest. And guess what? The so-called Negroes in America, the blacks in America, which is not even recognized as a nation, came in as number nine. In other words, if they were to take, they were to make a collection of all of the money that black people spent in that one year and compared it to nations on this planet, Negroes in America would have came in number as the ninth wealthiest nation on this planet. That's pathetic, and we're not even recognized as a nation. All from consumption. So, just like the brother was bringing out, when you come back to the commandments of the Most High and you're not giving up that $350 billion, he's going to get mad and come after you. That's what he's talking about. Now, let's get back to what we were reading. That was an excellent point that the brother brought up. Hold on. And even though, when you, when you read about our people, because there's going to be a remnant of our people who are what? Who are not going to want to follow the commandments. Who's still going to want to keep America. And what's going to happen when this war comes? All right, go to Isaiah 13 real quick. Read verse 2 so that you may understand, okay? The nation started with the so-called white man, all right, knows already that he's the devil. They already know that, okay? All right, like a lot of brothers and sisters may not know that. They already know that. All the word devil means is deceiver. And they deceived the earth for quite some time. Now, when you go to Isaiah 13, all right, Verse 2, it coincides with the brother already read back in Revelation chapter 12. Read. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Lift ye up a banner. Lift ye up a banner. What's the banner that has to be lifted up? The Bible. That has to be taught. It's being lifted up. What's being taught out of the Bible? Thus saith the Lord, the commandments of the Most High. Read. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice upon the high mountain. What is the high mountain alluding to? It's alluding to America. It is the high mountain. The government the, the, the government is what it's talking about. It is called the superpower. So it says, lift up the banner upon the high mountain. Meaning here in America, teach. Thus saith the Lord as it is written. Read. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice. Exalt the voice. Exalt the voice of the Bible. Lift up the voice and teach. Thus saith the Lord. Come on. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Who is that talking about? Okay. It is talking about the wicked of our people who what? Who are going to reject the commandments of the most high. All right. Don't what? We shake the hand. We teach. All right. Other brothers who the Lord's going to let them teach in the word as is written, teaching the commandments to repent in Christ. You want to have Israelites that what? They're going to want to go what? Inside the other nations, starting with the so-called white man, to what? To get brothers off the streets. Because what? They are teaching the Israelites to keep the commandments. The so-called blacks and Hispanics. That they may what? That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. It's similar to what was done to Christ. Okay? You had the Pharisees and Sadducees that what? That spoke many lies on Christ. That incited the people to do what? To eventually get what? Wicked Israel to go to Caesar. Alright? To what? To put Christ to death. 
Right. And it's the same thing, okay? Because the only way the nation is going to come against them who what? Who keep the commandments, all right, and teach Jesus the Christ, all right? That's the only way it's going to happen. That's what a lot of people don't understand. You worry about the Illuminati. You worry about all these uh, different inventions. No. The way it's going to go down is what? If Israel repents, that remnant of Israel repents and keeps the commandments. Then you're going to have those other Israelites that what? That love America. That don't want America to what? To fall. They are going to run to the nobles, to the other nations, and speak much evil. Okay? To cause some type of reaction.